Hey guys, Sean from Invest to Live. Uh, today we're going to do something different. We're going to kick off a series, um, a number of episodes around different features of sort of the investing and trading world and where you can go to get free training to learn more about these different areas. Uh, what's really kicking this off for me is there just seems to be this preponderance of high priced, you know, courses and gurus and high end training that doesn't seem to be much different than what's already out there for free or what you can just acquires knowledge from reading books or studying or using free websites or informational articles, things of that nature. So, you know, what we want to do here is kind of like break this down into a couple of different key areas. Um, there's no particular order of importance or anything like that. It's really just an opportunity to think, you know, of different areas people might be interested in, where you can go to grab some information on it, some general information about those markets, and then sort of a walk through what's available for free resources. It's not meant to be necessarily completely and all inclusive of everything that exists but sort of a good roundabout way to understand where you can start to go to gather some information. So as always, uh, I am not your financial advisor. I don't know your financial situation. So always make sure you understand the risks of what you're getting into. Talk to licensed and professional, um, uh, professionals rather. And just you know, make sure you're sort of protecting yourself and doing the right thing. Always understand the risk of what you're investing in no matter what the market is or where you're putting your money. Um, and this is for education and entertainment only. So, you know, we'll always kick our videos off that way. So let's get started. If you're not subscribed, uh, please do so. We really, really appreciate it. We just hit 100 subscribers when I posted this. So pretty exciting. What we're going to start with today um, is one that I think sort of gets the most confusion because of how big the market is. And there also seems to be an absolute boatload of people out there who are trying to make money by selling stuff to people to show them how to make money. And I think that that's always where you run into issues. So we're gonna to start today by talking about the Forex market. The Forex market is the foreign exchange market. It's a decentralized way of trading currencies in between one type to another type and could be several other ways of doing it as well, right? Or multiple times. Uh, and what I mean by decentralized is that there's no centralized market for currency trading or Forex trading. So if you think about in the US, we have NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. Um, with foreign currency, it's an over-the-counter market, which means you're typically going in between different parties could be with banks, individual spot traders. Um, there's no sort of centralized place where we go to place an order and have all the orders come in there. So just important to understand that with situations like that, there isn't always very tight regulation from country to country. There can be wild swings. There can be unknowns that are built into the price that you may not know. So again, just be careful. Um, much like investing or trading in any kind of asset class, Forex can be a situation where you're looking to trade short term. You know, Maybe you're looking to scalp. You could trade long-term things like swing trading. You could even potentially hold because you think that, you know, one currency has got a long time a horizon where it's just going to keep going a certain direction or a good way to keep your money there. Um, unlike what you might be used to with stocks, there is no dividends. There is no interest paid. There are no sort of like ETFs in this market. You are quite literally trading a U.S. dollar for a yen or for, a, you know, an Aussie or for the euro or anything in between. And there's lots of different currencies you can trade. One thing to note as well is this market is massive. We're talking somewhere in the range of $6.5 to $7 trillion traded per day uh, between parties in the Forex market. So that's massive. This is a very, very big market. And what also makes it quite different uh, is the margin you can leverage to trade in Forex. So depending on the broker and depending on where you're located in the world, you can trade you know, anywhere from like a 10 to 1 to a 50 to 1 or even more depending on where you are. When I first got started trading in Forex, we're going back to sort of the late 90s here. There was a 200 to 1 leverage rate. Um, and even as I say that now, sitting here, 200 to 1 sounds so wild. But the thing you have to remember is you're expecting a currency to move by, you know, tenths of a penny, perhaps, or by what's called pips. Pips are sort of the lowest measurable unit we look at. And I'll get into this in a second as far as how, what the trading looks like. Uh, so I just want to give this to you as a general market that there are major, major players in this market trading at the government level, central banks, the biggest financial institutions in the world. And you, as someone who might be a spot trader or someone who's just looking at the current price to what it'll be in the next second or five minutes or 10 hours or whatever the case might be, you may not always have the leverage that those huge banks have or those huge companies have to be able to sort of predict and influence those movements. But the beauty of it is the market is so, so big that there tends to not be this level of market manipulation you can see in stocks. With stocks, if a huge hedge fund comes out and says they're buying a big piece of a company, you might see some movement in that particular market. but in the currency realm, these are trillions and trillions of dollars a day. There's no one really big enough to make a huge move or manipulate the markets too much. Not to say it can't happen, but it's not something I typically worry too much about. So that's sort of a baseline understanding there of 
of sort of what that looks like. One thing I'd call out that's particularly interesting is really this idea of Forex or currency exchange has been going on forever. Um, since ancient times, there's always been a need to transfer one currency for another, understand those differences, what it means. And I think for a lot of people um, who don't really recognize the true Forex market, you might have experienced it by going to a country with a different currency and having to go to a bank or a little kiosk at the airport and simply switch your money out for another currency. Um, and, and so that's sort of where I, where I want to get started as far as you know what it is, what it looks like. Now, the other piece of this before we jump into the training aspect is there are also a lot of things here that can be very different than what you experience in general stock market trading. Um, there can be huge changes in government regulation. You can have some countries that pin their reserve currencies to a different currency and track that. There can be some that you see move in very different directions than the US dollar, for example. There can be some that are very closely related. So there's a lot of different things here that you wanna look at from a fundamental perspective as far as geographical issues, um, times of war, uh, weather patterns and long-term droughts. There's just a whole realm of things that can affect this market in a different way than what you might be used to. And it's important to understand that. Now, additionally, you do have what we call the, the sort of spot market, which is general to what you would see in this, on a stock uh, exchange, basically, where you buy in and you close and you sell and you buy out and move in and out. Same ideas, there's also um, futures available and options as well. The last piece I wanna speak to before sort of showing you where I would go if I wanted to get some training on this, is this idea of what's called a carry trade. And I know I'm dumping a lot of information on you here, so please feel free to slow it down and look into these things in more detail. And again, I do think these are things you'll see when you get into the training. The carry trade is this idea that you might take a currency that you can borrow at a very low interest rate, take that and exchange it for another currency with a really high interest rate, and then you collect that carry between those two pieces. So give you a basic example. If you can borrow one currency at a quarter of a percent, but you can then buy another currency that's going to pay you 6.5%, say. The differential of that 6.25% is what you'll be making on that. And when you factor in your margin, there's quite a bit of gain that can be had from holding that stock over a long period of time. Uh, in years past, the carry trade has been massive. And we've seen people make fortunes by just leveraging this carry trade. But we've also seen massive blowups of major global companies who were following carry trades and lots of retail investors as well, where suddenly one currency is devalued or loses that interest rate and those prices crash and you've lost it so fast because of that margin, you can't really ever make it back. So just know all these different factors and know how they can affect you, what the risks are, what can happen if you're not very careful. So that's sort of just to kick off the basic, um, you know, what is a Forex market, what it looks like and what the participants, par participants are in it. Now, let's get back to the real point here. I hear a Forex market, I think there's an opportunity. I think that is just another place that I can leverage some of my experience to go and trade and make some profits or potentially because I feel like I have a good grasp of certain currencies or certain countries and the political environments there on in. So I want to go and start learning how to do this. I think that there's a particular place that I would go and I've gone in the past when I first was learning here many, many years ago. Um, and it's a website called Baby Pips. And I'll show you this in just a second. Um, I have zero affiliation with this company in any way. I'm not endorsed comped, nothing. I'm not even, as far as I know, signed up to use it. Um, so I just want to be really clear on that, that I'm just recommending this because I've actually seen it. I know what it looks like. It is extremely useful for learning everything from like the most basic terms to the most advanced sort of techniques you can leverage. And I want to walk you through what this looks like here. So I'm going to share my screen if you bear with me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So we're just going to jump right into baby pips. And again, as you can see right from the Google search, it's learn forex trading with babypips.com. Pretty simple, pretty simple way to get started. And like any good website, there's all kinds of material on here. There's some news, there's some different contributors, there's groups you can follow. Um, there's even good forums. I think forums are good as well. And there's a calendar of events, which is really great if you're a trader. But I don't want to worry about any of that right now. We just want to jump right into uh, forex trading school here. And again, I've used this years past, so it's been a while. Um, but what they call here is the school of pipsology. Um, and essentially it's just meant to be a little bit funny, of course. But really the idea here is you can jump in, sign up for free, and start to learn everything you need to know about trading Forex. Um, what's nice about it is you can sort of track how you're performing. What's really nice, and the reason I've even advised having a lot of my close friends jump on here, is I think they have a very structured approach to the way they do their training. So as you can see here, you start off in what they call preschool. Uh, this is quite literally like, I have no idea what this is. I need the absolute most basic pieces of it to be able to do what I need to do here. So in this case, 
It might be simple things like what is Forex? How do you actually trade? When can you trade? Who trades it and why trade it? As you progress, you move into things like kindergarten, a little bit more. What are the different types of brokers, the types of analysis? Then you move on to elementary school, middle school, summer school, even, right? A little bit of funniness there. Ironic story too, when I was in uh, college studying finance, I actually took a summer course in international finance. And during that initial fin international finance course is where we really got into this idea of um, move, having to move and translate currencies across business aspects through multiple countries with different currency rates. And that really got me interested in this field. Uh, from there, you go to the high school. And of course, undergraduate, freshman, sophomore, you sort of get the idea here, right? It's very, very advanced stuff by the time you get to the end of it. I think what's great about this is as you're going through this, if you're really interested in it and you really want to keep going, great. You can keep learning and sort of just goes on forever here you know, to a point, of course. And, you know, if you get into it and you're like, this doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't want to put money into this. No problem either. I think that's the beauty of it. So really for today's episode, I just want to focus on what Forex was, how using a site like um, babypips.com is a great way to get started in it. And my other big piece of this as well, I am definitely a believer that it's important to always use a little bit of real money when you're learning because you tend to take things more serious. But Forex can be a very different animal. I think that Forex is a great example of a way to start off by paper trading or signing for an account where you have like play money to work with. Just to get a feel for what margin looks like, what types of investments there are, and understanding of what happens overnight, how things change over a weekend, what the market hours are, what kind of big moves happen from day to day. So I guess what I really wanna end with it is be super cautious in the Forex market. Really focus on learning as much as you can, because I think it's gonna be very important that you have a complete grasp of the fundamentals, how you look at those fundamentals and translate them into what you want to do, how you analyze and understand the different types of charts, what those basic movements are, but also understanding that like one country can make a singular decision or make a statement during a speech that can ripple through this entire market. And it's really important you understand how that works. So that's it for today. I really appreciate you guys giving me the time because this was a long one, longer than I normally do. Um, and what I just want to ask again was, listen, if, <clears throat> excuse me, oops. Sorry guys, just lost my screen there. If this is something you're interested in or you wanna learn more about these things, please like and subscribe to the video. We really appreciate it. Really trying to grow and get more of this free content out there. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoy the video and um, I'm <laughs> having technical difficulties here so I can't see my screen. So again, thanks so much for watching. I really wanna put more of this out there. We can just help you learn and learn from re free resources. I'm not saying you don't have to pay for things. I'm not saying there's sometimes value in doing that. But I do think when it comes to investing and trading, a lot of the material is put together in a really concise, easy way to use, and it's free, and it's online. So you don't even have to leave your house to actually get into it. So thanks so much. We'll see you again soon. Have a good one.